In this video, I'll discuss how you and your students can design Onshape models for 3D printing. While almost anything you design can be sent to a 3D printer, not everything will print cleanly. This video has a variety of tips and design strategies that will improve your 3D printing experience. As you begin designing, it's critical to know the specifications of your printer as well as the material. Two equally strong parts printed in PLA and nylon will not look the same due to the material differences, so it's important to design with your chosen material in mind. This same logic applies to your printer. The dimensions of your nozzle and build volume should be accounted for early in the design process. When your slicing software turns your STL model into printable G-code, it cuts the part into many horizontal layers defined by the layer height. If the height of your part is not a multiple of the layer height, it will round it up or down. This is usually hard to notice because the layers are thin, but it can cause issues if parts are supposed to fit tightly together. An easy way to avoid this problem is to use variables in Onshape. You can create a variable by clicking the variable icon. We'll call this one layer height and set it to be 0.2 millimeters. When I'm extruding this nameplate, I can type in the variable name and multiply it by how many layers I want printed. I'll set this to be 10 layers thick. Now, when I export this file and slice it, it will create exactly 10 layers at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Similar to designing for layer heights, it's probably more important to design for line widths. By designing for the line width of your nozzle, you can ensure that thin sections will print and can reduce the amount of small infill areas. A majority of filament-based 3D printers come stock with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so I'll use that as my line width value. This model has a thin wall section that is less than 0.4 millimeters, as well as a larger section that has a random width. When I slice this part, you can see that the thin wall section is missing and that the larger portion has some gap fill. To avoid both of these problems, I'll set a variable that is equal to the nozzle size of 0.4 millimeters. For the thin wall, I'll make it that variable, and the larger section will be a multiple of that variable. When I import and slice the part, you'll now see that the thin section is included and the larger section is just made of perimeters. By reducing the amount of gap fill or infill necessary, you can get cleaner prints and reduce printing time. If you end up with a part that won't fit inside your build volume, Onshape will allow you to split it into multiple parts. To split a part, start by defining what you would like the split to look like. A dovetail shape is usually really useful for this application. With the dovetail sketched, I'll extrude it as a surface. This will define the split faces. Click on the split icon and then the part that needs to be split. Click on the Entity to Split With box and select the surface we just created. You'll see in the parts list that each side of the part is now a discrete part and can be exported and printed separately. After you finish a design, you may decide that it's not quite the right size. Instead of changing all of the dimensions of a part, you can simply scale it using the Transform feature in Onshape. Start by clicking on the Transform icon. Opening the first dropdown will reveal that the transform feature has a wide variety of uses, such as translating, rotating, and scaling. We'll set this to scale, and then leave scale uniformly checked. We'll select the part that we'd like to scale, and then select the point that we'd like to scale about. The origin is usually a good choice for this. All that's left is to type in the scale we'd like to use. You can enter numbers with decimals or even fractional values. Some materials have a tendency to curl off of the print bed, especially if the printed part is large and flat. A common solution to this curling problem 
is for the slicer to add a brim to the first layer of the print. This can work, but brims don't always remove cleanly, and not everywhere requires a brim. This is where bed adhesion circles, often called mouse ears, can come into play. A mouse ear is a one or two layer circular disc that is designed into your model and placed at troublesome corners. In this example, I've placed mouse ears at each corner of the nameplate. This will greatly reduce the likelihood that the print peels off the bed. Once your print is complete, you can peel them off or cut them with small shear cutters. When each student is looking to print a part, long printing times can cause a bottleneck and leave students waiting. Beyond reducing the infill of your part or changing the print speeds, it's often beneficial to remove unnecessary material from the parts you're trying to print. For example, this flat part will hold some bearings. It has a lot of material that simply doesn't need to be there. To reduce the material usage, I'll use the Lighten Feature Script. Feature scripts are user-created features that have been programmed to do a specific function. A wide variety exists and can really elevate your Onshape experience. To use this feature script, I'll add it to my Onshape account. Now, I'll draw the framework for the material I'd like to remain. With that done, I can select the Lighten Feature Script and click the regions that I would like lightened. I'll set the width to be a multiple of the line width, and just like that, I've greatly reduced the amount of material and time needed to create this part. Once all these tips have been put into practice, it's time to export your parts. Any 3D printing slicing software will import the STL file type, so that's what we will export our Onshape parts as. To do this, we'll go to the parts list, select our part, and then right click to open the menu. Selecting export will open the export dialog where we can choose STL. I recommend setting the quality to fine as it'll increase the quality of curved surfaces. The other settings are fine, as these are the defaults for slicing softwares. That wraps up this video on how you and your students can improve your 3D printed models using Onshape.